Hello friends, I am Srishti and I am back with another set of 5 questions for you related to finance. Today we are going to discuss really important topics and some topics are also related to financial management. Do watch the video till end so that you could get the important and key concepts in your minds and you could understand each and every part of it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then do subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon because trust me, it will be really helpful for you. Now, starting with the first question of today. Now, the question says, what was the earlier name of Poshan Abhiyan introduced by the government of India in the year 2017? So, in 2017, a Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched a scheme which has been now renamed to Poshan Abhiyan. So the question is asking you to identify the earlier name of this Poshan Abhiyan mission. Four options have been given to you and you have to tell me the correct one. So before disclosing the answer, let's have some brief discussion about what Poshan Abhiyan is. Okay guys, so here are some facts that I have collected for you. So it was introduced in 2017-18 to reduce the instances of malnutrition and stunting by 2022. So this mission is a multi-ministerial convergence mission with the vision to ensure attainment of malnutrition free India by the year 2022. So you have to remember this year as well. Now as I've told you that it is a multi-ministerial convergence mission. The Ministry of Women and Child Development is implementing Poshan Abhiyan in 315 districts in the first year, in the second year 235 districts and the remaining districts will be covered in the third year. Now, multi-ministerial means that it is governed by many ministries. So here is the list of the ministries and as you can see, the largest part which is shaded as pink, it is of Ministry of Women and Child Development. So if you remember only this ministry, it will be more than enough for you. But you must know that is a, it is a multi-ministerial convergence mission. Now, what does this mission aims at? The mission aims to drastically reduce the prevailing high incidence of malnutrition, stunted growth and anemia. And the intention is to do this through convergence, mass movements and leveraging technology. Now, I think that I have given you enough additional knowledge related to this. In this, you have to remember this 2022 multi-ministerial mission and this ministry's name. Now, moving back to the question to answer it. Okay, so the earlier name of this portion Abhiyan was National Nutrition Mission and it was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi as I have already told you on 8th March and it was then renamed to Poshan Abhiyan. Now, let's go to our next question for today. Okay, so this question relates to the Finance Act 2019 amendment and it is a really important question because it has great implications related to this. So the question says that Finance Act 2019 has amended the National Housing Bank Act 1987 recently. Which of the following amendments have been made with regard to the NHB Act? So four options have been given to you and to answer this question, you must know that what were the amendments related to the NHB Act that were made in the Finance Act 2019 because no guesswork will work here. So before answering this question, I have took a screenshot of the notification by RBI regarding this amendment. So let's see that first. Now the Finance Act 2019 number 2, it has amended NHB Act 1987. Now if you want to check it, then you can go to Finance Act 2019 and you can check part 7 of chapter 6. Now the amendment is that HFCs, that is housing finance companies, now will be treated as one of the categories of NBFCs for regulatory purposes. Now, till the time RBI comes up with a revised framework, HFCs shall continue to comply with the directions and instructions issued by NHB. So now, HFCs will come under the regulation of RBI. Earlier, it was under the regulation of NHB. But till the time RBI issues a revised framework, it will have to comply with the directions and instructions issued by NHB. 
now we are capable enough to answer the question that i have asked to you but doing further research i thought that it is important to share one more additional information with you regarding the finance act 2019 amendment related to nhp act so let's move to the next slide to have a look at what are the amendments and then we'll answer the question so earlier the limit of the net owned funds was 2 crore but now it has increased to 10 crore now what is the implication that earlier the housing finance institutions they were allowed to carry on their business if they have the net owned fund of 2 crore but now that limit has increased to 10 crore so only the institutions that want to run as hfcs shall have to comply with this regulation of 10 crore so many of the small hfcs will not be in play now and also as i have told you that now the regulatory authority will be rbi so everywhere in the act the nhb has been replaced by rbi so now let's talk about the question that i have asked so as for the finance act 2019 hfcs will be considered as one of the categories of nbfcs and therefore will be directly supervised by rbi so this is the correct option here because no amendments related to the time frame has been mentioned by rbi and also the function of nhb or providing technical and administrative assistance has not been prohibited so now moving on to the next question now this question relates to the financial management subject the question is if the intrinsic value of a stock is less than its market value then which of the following is the most reasonable conclusion before answering this question one thing must be clear in your minds that what is intrinsic value and what is market value the intrinsic value is the actual worth of the stock whereas the market value depends upon the demand and supply conditions so the question is saying that if the actual worth of a stock is less than the market value then which option will be the reasonable and the most appropriate conclusion for the situation that i have described so let's move on to the next slide so that we can have all the three situations regarding to intrinsic value and the market value of a stock the first says if the actual value or the intrinsic value is more than the market value for example if the intrinsic value of a stock is rupees 10 whereas the market value is only rupees 5 then the stock is undervalued in the market because the actual worth of the stock is not captured by the market value the next is intrinsic value is equal to the market value then the stock is correctly priced in the market the third case to which our question relates to it is that when the intrinsic value is less than the market value that is if the intrinsic value is 5 but the market value shows it at 10 so the market has overvalued the price of the share because it is showing the price of the share more than its worth so we have got our answer moving back to the question to answer this now a part could not be the answer because the level of risk has nothing to do with intrinsic value and the market value divergence the second is the stock offers a high dividend payout ratio which is also not correct and it is not related to the situation that i have described third is the market is undervaluing the stock so it is the case where the intrinsic value is more than the market value but our question says that intrinsic value is less than the market value so our stock is overvalued in the market that is when intrinsic value is less than the market value so the correct answer is option d now moving on to the next question the question says which of the following is not a component while calculation of core consumers price index in india so four options have been given to you you have to tell me the correct answer but before that let's have a brief discussion related to this for those who don't know the answer but don't worry after this you will be able to answer such type of questions in a 
very good manner because we are going to discuss the components of CPI in a brief manner. Okay, so CPI, it has six components while calculation in India. The first is food and beverages, second is tobacco and intoxicants, third is clothing and footwear, fourth is housing, fuel and light and miscellaneous. Now you must be wondering that what miscellaneous is and what are the components that is included in the miscellaneous component. So let's have a look. Miscellaneous may include household goods and services. I'll be writing it in short form. Then we have health, education, transport and communication. Then we have personal care and effects. And lastly, we have recreation and amusement. So these are the components in the miscellaneous component of CPI. Now what is core CPI? Core CPI is also known as the CPI minus the energy and food prices. So as you can see that food and beverages and fuel and light is not included for calculation of core CPI. And the reason behind this is that energy and food prices are removed because they have tendency to be highly volatile. And this has a clear policy implication because CPI can give a misleading impression of underlying inflationary pressures because fuel and food are highly volatile. So now let's move back to our question. So as we have discussed that core CPI is the CPI minus energy and food. So the correct option is option A, which is fuel and food component. Now moving on to the last question for today. If an investor may have to sell a bond prior to maturity and interest rates have risen since the bond was purchased. So the investor is exposed to which type of risk? The question says that if you have invested in a bond and you have sell the bond prior to the maturity period, but the interest rates have risen since the bond was purchased by you. So which type of risk I am talking about? So let's see this through an example. Suppose you have purchased a bond with a coupon rate of 10%. Now assume this is fixed for this bond and after your purchase, the interest rates have gone up to 20%. But you will be getting the interest rates on this bond at 10% and not 20%. So because of the increase in the interest rates, you are facing the interest rate risk so the correct option is option number b but you must know that what business risk credit risk and financial risk is and i want to share one more risk with you that is the reinvestment risk which is closely related to interest rate risk so let's see how in the next slide okay as the name suggests financial risk is the risk which relates to the debt and financial leverage of a company business risk is a risk which refers to company's ability to generate sufficient revenue to cover its operational expenses interest rate risk as i've already discussed it with you and credit risk is the risk of default which may arise from a borrower due to the failure of making the payments so as I have told you that I will be discussing one more risk with you which is reinvestment risk. So interest rate risk arises when the interest rates have gone up. But when the interest rates have fallen then comes the reinvestment risk. So by definition it means reinvestment risk refers to the possibility that an investor will be unable to reinvest its cash flows like coupon payments at a rate comparable to their current rate of return because the cash flows which the investor is receiving it is assumed that he will reinvest these cash payments these coupon payments so for example an investor buys a 10 year treasury note with an interest rate of say 6% so he is expecting to get 6000 rupees i have forgot to mention the principal amount which is 1 lakh. So he will be getting 6000 rupees. Next, if this interest rate falls to say 4%, then the interest or the coupon payment that he will be receiving will be 4000. So because of the decline in the interest rate, there arises the risk of reinvestment. So with this, we have completed five questions for today. And I hope that you could make sense of every question that I have discussed with you, the concept behind those questions and the facts that I have discussed. If you like my video, 
then do subscribe to our channel like the video comment on the video if you have any queries related to it and we shall be discussing over that issue thank you for watching my video